Judges chapter 15. But it came to pass within a while after a known time period in the time of wheat harvest that would be the feast of weeks it's the summertime that Samson visited his wife with a kid it's a goat not he came showing up with a child and he said I will go into my wife into the chamber self-explanatory but her father would not suffer him to go in and her father said, Verily I thought that thou had, hadst utterly hated her. He took off. Chapter 14. Therefore I gave her to thy companion. That's who he used as a friend. Chapter 14. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. Well, that's wrong. That's making a woman commit adultery. And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than a Philistine, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson went and caught three hundred foxes and took firebrands. They're like little torches. So it would be a hundred and fifty torches. And turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. 300 foxes. He ties two tails together to be 150 pairs of foxes with the torches. Uh, what they're going to do when he sets them free, they're going to go crazy. Because here's a fire and here they're tied to each other. They want to be free. And when he has set the bands, that's the first and last time that shows up, on fire. That's funny, the word bands in the Bible doesn't have anything to do with music group has to do with a torch he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burnt up both the shocks that's the pile of sheaves and also the standing corn with the vineyards and the olives so he started a massive fire in fields in yards in trees now let's look at two places here, Exodus 22, 6. Now what happens, and the Philistines are not going to follow the law of God, but Samson is a Jewish man under the law. Exodus 22, 6. God has a statute, a law, against what? Samson had done 22 6 next to this if fire break out well there's no if about it I mean it was purely arson okay and catch the first time that word shows up in the Bible in thorns well whatever reason thorn and they caught on fire you, you lit a fire and thorn and so the stacks of corn Samson of the standing corn Samson or the field be consumed therewith he that kindled the fire Samson shall surely make restitution the Philistines would had right to tell Samson you owe us some money. Though what this father-in-law of his had done wrong. And this is not the first time. 2 Samuel 14. 2 Samuel chapter 14. Verse number 30. And both of these are an attention getter. What a way to get someone's attention. The Native Americans used smoke. They didn't use a fire. And you would run this back to Exodus 22, verse 6, in 2 Samuel 14, 30. Now Absalom, a real wicked character in the Bible, wants to get Joab's attention. 
So that's on verse 30. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, Joab's field, Exodus 22, 6, is near mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Wow. So Absalom and Samson are liable, according to the law, to make a restitution for what they've done. Now, in Judges 15, the Philistines take a more broad, wicked way. And then the Philistines said, who has done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. So it's common knowledge. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. Now that seems to be a standard way of the Philistines, because in chapter 14, verse 15, And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband, that he may declare unto us the riddle, Least we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. So it looks like Samson done what he had done, knowing that the Philistines would attack his father-in-law and his wife with fire, capital punishment, which the crime has nothing to do with his wife. Right now, it's against Samson. All right, whatever the wife and the father-in-law did, that's between Samson and the law. What Samson did to the Philistines is between the Philistines and Samson. And it gets confusing. And verse 7, Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, the avenger of blood, where God built the, the six cities of refuge. He's gonna, he has made them so he can become the avenger of blood and attack them. And after that, I will cease. I'll stop. Because you killed my wife and burned her and her family. I'm going to go after you. You're in trouble. And it's amazing here. It says, and he smoked them hip and thigh. This chapter has a lot of body parts mentioned in it. More than I can tell in any other chapter of the Bible. So far we saw tales of foxes. And he smoked him hip, hip and thigh. So when he battles these men, he only aims for one part of the body. With a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock, Etham. And he stops. Then the Philistines went up, they're not going to stop, and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? Why are you here, Philistines? And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up, to do to him as he's done to us. Kill. Murder. Now how strong is Samson? Then 3,000 men of Judah. That's a strong man. And Judah are not wimpy people. Jews are not feeble. 3,000 men versus one man, their own brother, their own tribe, well, I don't mean tribe, their own, you know, Dan and Judah are the tribes of the children of Israel. Went to the top of the rock of Etam. And said to Samson, now mark this, knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? That's a remarkable statement. Now let's go to John 8, 33. And let's watch the people lie in front of Jesus Christ. John 8, 33. Even though they are under a Roman government, 
and they got to get a Roman government permission to put Jesus Christ to death, they make a remarkable statement here that they don't know what they're talking about. Eight thirty-three. This is a Jew speaking to Jesus. They don't know their history. And they answered him, Jesus, we be Abraham's seed. And we never in bondage, bondage to any man. Uh, what did Judah say in chapter 15 of Judges? Those Philistines are rulers of us. And Babylon, you go with Babylon, and then you all, all the nations that we Midianites were over. The entire book of Judges proves John 8.33 wrong. Forty years had rest and they sinned against God and God sent this country against them and they cried to God. God sent the judge and they ruled over them. They did right for 20 years and God sent another because they did wrong. We read in chapter 14 that the Philistines are in a Jewish Judean town. And they still are. What is this that thou hast done unto us? Well, really not you. They come for one man. They came for Samson. They didn't come for you. And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. The golden rule. And that is law. An eye for an eye, a two for a tooth, a that's no way Christian doctrine. Jesus will say, love your enemy and pray for them. In the Old Testament, you'll read David saying to son, Lord God, go beat them up, go kill them, go send them in hell. Anybody's against me, Lord God, do them evil. That's not church doctrine. So they killed my wife. I killed them. That's what he said. Now they want to kill him. In verse 12, And they said unto him, We are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. There's Judas. Sold out Jesus Christ. The children of Judah are selling out Samson. We're going to come and bind you. We're going to tie you up. And we're going to send you to the Philistine. I'm going to come and sell you out and tell the priests where you are so they can come and bind you. Now, and Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that ye will not fall upon me yourselves. Don't kill me. Swear unto it. Swear unto me that you will bind me, but you will not kill me. Well, they'll swear. They're traitors for peace. And that's what Israel's been doing over the last few years, the last presidents we have. We will give in and we'll get peace. We'll let the we let the PLO have more property. We'll let them have more property. We'll stop sending missiles in order to peace. That's been 2000, 2001, 2002, all the way to present day. But they haven't got the peace. Verse 13, and they spake unto him, saying, No, we're not going to kill you, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand. Now mark that verse. Remember there are certain things in chapter 14 we learned now this thing. You realize now he, he will be playing a game with Delilah. We talked about in chapter 14. If you bind my hands with three women, Samson's not getting, he will not get, when we get to the story of Delilah, he will not go back in his past and say, well, oh, wait a minute, this happened before. He's too busy playing games. He's playing a game right now with the children. Yeah, you're not going to kill me? All right, go ahead and bound me up because I know he ain't going to do me no good. And that's the same attitude he has in front of Delilah. No, but we'll bind these eyes and deliver thee in their hand. But surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And they bound Jesus and bound him to, to the Roman government. 
and it was Jesus' own people, Jesus' own priests, that bound him and brought him to Herod and Pilate. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mighty upon him. There's the Holy Spirit working in him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that is burned with fire. There was just nothing. And again, this is going to be with Delilah. And I remember those old records. You'd be reading along and say, turn page. Boy, that old. His bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass. Now, let me ask you a question. That jawbone and ass, is that ass alive or is it dead? Let's go back to Numbers chapter 19. He's definitely broken the Navite. Numbers 19, I'm in Leviticus. Numbers chapter 19, verse 16. Now this is not the Navite, but this is the law. 1916 numbers he's a Jew under the law and whosoever touches one day is slain with a sword he's already killed a whole bunch of men thigh and I forgot what the other word was in the open field he's gonna kill he's gonna kill a thousand more or a dead body or a bone jawbone of any man of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days and that donkey is an unclean animal and number six six before we come out of this book number six six the nazarite vow which has already been broken by the lion he has been despised of the nazarite vow by a lion and an ass. And all the days that he separates himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. Well, picking up that ass jawbone, it's not a live jawbone. He put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. Well, Numbers 19:16. He's touching a dead animal, and now he's touched dead people using a dead bone of a dead animal. Wow. And he's in Hebrews chapter 11. I mean, they pick on Samson for, for committing suicide. There's a lot more things you can pick on about Samson than just suicide. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast the, the jawbone out of his hand and called the place Remeth Lehi. And he was sore of thirst, thirsty, and called on the Lord, Jehovah, capital L, capital R, capital O, capital R, capital, because something weird is going to happen now. And thou hast given this great de deliverance into the hand of thy servant. Now look at look at Samson. God, you given me the victory, and I am your servant. There's no lie there. And now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? Now with the verse 19, but God clave and hollow place. That was in the jaw. And there came water there out. That dead animal. And we got three amazing, and someone's going to laugh at this, but we got three amazing asses in the Bible. We got Balaam's ass that speaks. We got a dead ass that provides uh, victory as an 
as a weapon and water for a thirsty servant of God. And we've got an ass that Jesus Christ gets on has never been ridden and just takes him right into the city of Jerusalem. There is a sermon there. I always got one maybe it's the same ass family. I don't know. But God clave in hollow place that was in the jaw, the dead animal, and there came water thereof. That's kind of interesting, it's a dead animal. It's an unclean dead animal. What are you going to do with that one? Right. There's another one. God made water come out of a rock. This animal's completely dry, dead. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof En Hekorah, which is Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines, 20 years. You think that's it in the story, but that's not it in the story. One more chapter. And wait till what happens before he gets to Delilah. All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. 